Good day, Mount Moriah and friends. We welcome you into the sanctuary of Mount Moriah Baptist Church for another Bible study. We are in the last chapter of the book of Proverbs, chapter 31. And I was looking through my notes prior to uh, coming to Bible study and noticed that we started this journey through the book of Proverbs in April of 2021. And so we are more than two years in. There have been a few weeks in which we uh, did something else for Bible study, but for the most part, over the last two years, we have been in the book of Proverbs, and we are drawing to a close now. So I hope that uh, this Bible study series has helped you as it has helped me. Proverbs 31 is comprised of two sections. The first section is verses 1 through 9, and these are the words of Lumiel. And then the rest of it is something that all of us are familiar with, or most of us are familiar with, and it is called a hymn to a valiant woman. In verses 1 through 9, it is very similar to the first section of the book, chapters 1 through 9, in which a parent, in this case, a queen mother, is given advice to the king. And we see royal instruction taking place, keeping in mind that the queen mother is a position of great importance. Just as a side note, as I thought about this, uh, I I thought about the series uh, on HBO uh, called Queen Charlotte. And it is a offspin of the Bridgertons in which uh, the queen mother who is uh, played by a British woman of African descent who is married to the king and how she influences society, um, but most importantly, how she tries to influence her sons and daughters, specifically her sons, so that they might give offspring to an heir that will eventually rule Britain and so, or rule England. And so I thought about uh, the correlation between the powerfulness of Queen Charlotte and the powerfulness of this Queen Mother. And I love it because she is of African descent. So you can see the influence of a woman of African descent on a nation uh, that was Uh, the ruler of the world during that time. And so, if you haven't watched it, I encourage you to do so. And then we all know, again, verses 10 through 31, they are a hymn of praise of a capable wife. In verses 10 through 12, we have the introduction of the woman. And then in chapter 13 through 27, we have a catalog of her heroic deeds. And then in verses 28 to 31, we have an invitation to join the poet in praise of his subject. And so in the latter part, we see wisdom embodied in a noble woman. And we also see the symbolism of a wife as wisdom. So this week, we will look at verses 1 through 9. Again, the word of Lumiel, a queen mother, is giving advice to her son as queen, as king rather, and using her influence to do so. So let's look at verses 1 through 9 of Proverbs 34. It reads the sayings of King Lumiel and inspired utterance his mother taught him. Listen, my son, listen, son of my womb. 
Listen, my son, the answer to my prayers. Do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. It is not for kings, Lumiere. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for rulers to crave beer, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Let beer be for those who are perishing, wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you again for this study on this day. And we ask and pray your spirit in this place. And we ask and pray that you would be the ultimate teacher. In the name of the Christ, we pray and give thanks. Amen. The proverb begins in verse 1 by saying, The sayings of King Lumiel, an inspired utterance his mother taught him. And then in verse 2 we hear, Listen, my son, listen, son of my womb. Listen, my son, the answer to my prayers. Here, this proverb addresses my son. Again, the queen mother, which is a position of high importance, is giving advice to her son, the king. The king mother instructs her son not only in reference to his duty as king, or his duty in reference to justice, but she also instructs him about his duty or concerning his duty in relationship to women who might come his way. She talks to him about the preoccupation with women. King Lumiel, we really don't know who he is, uh, but we do know, again, uh, that this is instruction from the mother to the son. Notice, again, she teaches him in verses 1 through 9. But li look at the relationship between the mother and the son. Listen, my son, the answer to my prayers. This son was an answer to the queen mother's prayers. I think that this is, this is interesting because, again, this is the mother of the king, and she has given him instruction. But it appears that even if she was not the king's mother, because of her love for her son, she still would have given him instruction. And that tells us a lot about a mother's love. It doesn't matter how high the son or the daughter gets. The mother is still mother. And in many cases, the mother will tell the son or the daughter, um, I'm still your mother. So I thought that was very unique uh, about, about these verses. In verse 3, uh, we have this whole admonition. Do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. So we see a basic metaphor for the way in which the king should conduct his life. Again, especially in relationship to women. She tells him, again, do not spend your strength on women and do not spend your strength or your vigor on things or on people who ruin kings. So she tells him to stay away from anything that keeps you from being a king who imparts justice and equality. 
And a good mother does that, right? Whether she is the queen mother or whether she is a mother, a good parent does that. Uh, they tell their children to stay away from the pitfalls of life. Don't do this. Don't do that. Do this. Do that. Watch out for that. Watch out for that person. Watch out for that person. Don't go here. Don't go there. And as I speak about this, I think that if a lot more of that was going on in our city, the plight of our city would be a whole lot better. Specifically, talking about mothers who give instruction to her children. Fathers also who give instruction to their children. Verses 4 and 5, it is not for kings, Lumiel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for rulers to crave beer, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Again, <laughs> beer and wine, alcoholic beverages uh, were commonplace uh, in biblical times. And we see the mother as any good mother would do, warn the king of the effects of alcohol on memory and judgment. She basically tells her son that if you um, spend your time drinking wine and craving beer, then you will have the tendency to drink, and the more you drink, the more you forget you forget what you have decreed, and as a drunkard, you might neglect to do the most important duty that is yours as king, to make sure that the rights of those who are oppressed are enacted. So she warns him again uh, against this notion of of drinking wine and craving beer. She wants the king to be at his best to remember and to judge fairly. And she tells him that drinking wine and craving beer perverts the rights of those who need justice. And if you are in a drunken state, it can change your judgment. The queen's mother concern, and I'm sure the king, queen's mother has seen it before. She saw it in her husband as king um, that in government there is this possibility that the plight of those who cannot protect themselves is damaged. So she wants to protect the rights of those who cannot speak for themselves. To protect the rights of those who are poor and oppressed. She wants to make sure that the government of her son protects those rights. And so we see the power and the influence of this queen mother. All good mothers um, say uh, to their children, don't do alcohol, don't do drugs, or if it comes to alcohol, do it in moderation. Don't drink, don't drive. Uh, I think all of us uh, who have Godly mothers and godly fathers have presented this type of wisdom unto us. Then the queen mother sort of flips the script and she says that there are some positive uses of alcohol. The positive use of alcohol, however, does not apply to her son as king. 
because he has to stay sober so that he can judge, so that he can protect the rights of those who cannot protect themselves and to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. But she talks about the positive use of alcohol in verses 6 and 7. She said, let beer be for those who are perishing, wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. So here we have her giving wisdom. And it is important for us not to judge this queen mother because we really do not know the situation. But wisdom also is uh, too perceptive to offer simplistic solutions to problems like alcohol abuse. And, uh, and so the queen mother might be seeing some things that may not be seen to us today because we might not in our society uh, tell people to drink their problems away. And that is essentially what she's saying. Um, and for me, honest, to come back and make an absolute prohibition of alcohol or other drugs would be to remove their proper use. So uh, I'm not going to sit here and say uh, don't drink alcohol because um, that is not something that I personally believe. I believe everything should be done in moderation. I don't think that uh, having a glass of wine at home or at dinner or um, at happy hour or a cocktail or drink, there's anything wrong with that. Uh, I think that uh, when you uh, do so to the point where your um, judgment is altered, then that's where it becomes a misuse. And I would not make a prohibition uh, against drugs because... Um, those who are infirm, those who are sick, uh, those who are in pain uh, are prescribed medicine of high dosage. Now, I would be uh, remiss if I did not make an absolute prohibition against drugs that are not legalized, such as fentanyl, which is running rampant in our community, I will make an absolute prohibition against that. But to make a general statement against alcohol or other drugs uh, would remove the proper use of prescribed drugs as well as um, the non-misuse, if that is a word, of, of alcohol. What we have here is that we have a less chemically sophisticated society where alcohol is used as an anesthetic, as a numbing function. So where a person who might be having trauma or who may be going through mental illness or may uh, have some type of um, pain in their bodies, we might be prescribed a drug, a painkiller, or something that, that may calm us down. In biblical times, alcohol was an anesthetic. It was a numbing function. So as we look at that, let us let us just think about what the queen mother was, was thinking. She was thinking about alcohol being an anesthetic, a numbing function. So she says, let beer be for those who are perishing, wine for those who are in anguish. 
So those who are having difficult times, those who are going through anxiety, let alcohol be their anesthetic. Let alcohol be their calming function. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Nowadays, if you um, do this, use alcohol as an anesthetic, which is done, it can have harmful effects. Uh, we can go to a doctor, we can go to a psychotherapist and uh, be given medication that might be uh, more healthier uh, than the abuse of alcohol. She says those who are in bitter anguish may drink to forget their sorrow, but a son as king should not because he has to remember to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves and to protect those who cannot protect themselves. In verses 8 through 8 through 9, Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. The mother tells her son, who is the king, not to be passive, but to be active and zealous in seeking the well-being of the poor and the helpless. So again, the queen mother wants her son to stay sober. She wants her son not to spend his time and strength on women and not to spend his vigor on those who ruin kings so that he can speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves so he can look up look out for the rights of those who are destitute so that he can speak up and judge fairly and so that he can defend the rights of the poor and, and the needy. Um, great advice um, for this son from this mother. So, Jesus also um, tells us in Matthew 25, as we conclude, uh, he tells us that if someone is hungry, we ought to give them something to eat. If someone is thirsty, we ought to give them something to drink. If they are naked, we ought to give them clothing. If they are in prison, uh, we should go visit them. If they are an orphan, we should let them in. And Jesus says, when we have done this to the least of these, we have done it unto him. So it is biblical for us to look out for the rights of the poor and the needy. And it is biblical for us to teach our children to do the same. That concludes verses 1 through 9. Thank you for being with us on today. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you for study on today. And we thank you and we praise you for your presence in this place. We ask and pray that you would help us to apply these words to our lives. In the name of the Christ, we pray and give thanks. Amen.